everybody. I'm Terry at Holding Your Space, and this is dun 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 Susan Lynn. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so glad you're here tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me. Happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. And um, it looked like so much fun when you guys were in Sedona. I'm going to go right there because it just happened. <sighs> was magic. I mean, okay, so I've been a hermit all throughout the pandemic. Right. I, I'm, I, that's probably like, I was happy, right. To kind of be in hermit town. But, <laughs> um, so Sedona was the first time I've been on a plane. Uh, Sedona was the first time I've been in a big group of people and I missed that. I missed all those people that we, we could just relax and be who we are. And we could tell each other, I had this crazy dream or I saw this thing and you know, the person sitting at your lunch table is going to get it right. <laughs> right. Um, it's really magical to be around people that are just like you. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, how awesome, right. To be around Linda G and Mel and Jen Lynn and Debbie Freebird and uh, Kim and two of you. I mean, we're talking world-class psychics right here. And sometimes we would all be in the big, big, huge three row, you know, SUV that Linda rented to haul us all around. <laughs> and we would be like, Hey, what do you get on this? And we would all be talking politics. It made me feel a lot better actually. Cause it turns out we all agreed. We all had the same basic ideas about like the debt ceiling and things like that. And we all had, you know, our own unique, weird experiences in Sedona. Um, I had an experience where these, and I haven't really even talked about this on my channel. I did talk about it in Sedona, but I had this experience where these um, men came out of my floor. Now this would be like in my mind's eye, right? Like they huh. did not come out in real life. <laughs> that That's a boundary for me personally. But in my mind's eye, they came out of the floor and they were the color of the red rocks. They were the color of the soil. And, and, indelicately to me, they look like Gumby's because they were kind of stretched. Um, and so it was funny because they started talking to me. They were very kind. They were very, they were elders and they wanted to tell me that we were going to be doing these, this deep healing while we were there, that I myself was going to be getting healed, but also this was a healing event and, and they were welcoming us all there and they gave me this beautiful healing message. And then I was like, where are you from? Who are you? Why are you Gumby shaped? You know, so then I got, I got into my Virgo. I was like, why are your hips like that? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And then they left. <laughs> they were like, lady, we don't have to, we don't have to answer to you. We came and delivered our message. We love you. Bye. You know, uh, but Kim of intuitive you and Debbie, uh, they heard uh, chanting in their place, in their psychic hearing. Uh, so, yeah, there was a lot of really cool things happening. Wow. Well, um, so were they like, did you get an idea if they were galactic or if they were ancients from the land? They or? were ancients from the land. Uh, uh -huh. They literally came out of the floor and, and I had the impression that they came out of the land, right? That yeah. uh, they were uh, sort of like, they wanted me to understand that they would have been like the beginning of man, right? Like Whoa. the beginning of humankind. Like we represent the beginning of humankind. Um, whereas they were the color of the rocks, the red, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think they were from there. I got the sense they were actually from some part of Africa. Uh, which I think was kind of the beginning of man, right? Sure, right. Um, and so um, the other thing that we did that that I did, and I didn't have time, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have to go back. <laughs> but um, is I connected with Cochise, who's an um, a Native American Indian chief, um, and he just kept yelling his name to me the whole like. Well, after I did my presentation and I could relax, I was walking around the, you know, the property, which was very beautiful. And he just started yelling, Cochise, Cochise. So finally I got my phone out because I'm like, is this dude from around here or what? <laughs> and it turns out he is. That's his stomping ground. And I think that I could have done some work with him 
Uh, but I just couldn't. It, we had 77 people there. It was always meeting someone or talking to somebody or there was just a lot of socializing going on. So it was kind of hard to get away and do anything else. But I wouldn't have had it any other way, honestly. I met the wow. coolest people. I mean, what a joy. And I, I feel the same way about um, the pandemic. It was like, you know, I I was in hog heaven a little bit, except for people were sick. And that was yeah, very exactly. sad. But um, but what about me? I was like, <laughs> all these masters were on the on, on YouTube and Facebook. And you know, everybody was out there giving everything for free and med three meditations a day if you wanted them. I mean, anywhere you wanted them. And it was just amazing. It was it was a big growth opportunity for me. But um, okay, so I want to ask you one thing before we move on to another subject. Those um, the people that you met, the Gumby people. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to call them that, and that's okay either way. Yep. <laughs> the G men, I don't know. That's not quite right. They swear to God, they look like Gumbies to me. If you're <laughs> a certain age, you know what Gumbies are. This uh -huh. looked like it. They were stretched but they had these hip bones that were like not stretched. I'm like, what is happening here? But anyway, yes. yeah. Yeah. We won't call him Mr. Bill, but <laughs> <laughs> no, not exactly that. <laughs> but um, so I have a spirit that lives on my land and um, who's very ancient. And I feel like um, uh, she's kind of like a district manager. That's how I'll describe her. Nice. So she's not just, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but yours were like, primordial i mean probably yeah, they really the kind of were yeah, yeah the beginning of everything yeah. do you feel like there's a hierarchy there are you what's your sense on that they would not say they 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 re, they don't that doesn't resonate with them they don't feel like there's a hierarchy no. okay. um i mean not in that sense they they yeah. would say they would say that they're the first life I mean, but they don't see it as hierarchy. I don't know how else. there's yeah. not a sense of being over anybody. It's just, this is who we are. You know, the way this tree is not any better than that breed or species of tree. So that's kind of how they would say it to me. Uh, there's no hierarchy. This is just who we are. Well, and that's exactly what Buddha would say too, right? So, yeah. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Wow. But I well, get it about the hierarchy. I mean, we all want a district manager. <laughs> I was seeing an interview with, um, oh, what's his name? They call him the Gray Fox or something like that. He's a news commentator. Gloria Vanderbilt was his mom. Anyway, um, oh, the Silver oh. Fox, that's what they call him. And he's got the blue eyes. Anyway, so, yeah. yeah. So he's talking and he's talking about growing up with Gloria Vanderbilt as his mom and how crazy it was. And here he was, he was 10 years old and he wanted um, a board of directors because he thought if he had a board of directors, they could tell him what to do. And I thought, oh, that's a beautiful idea. I would love a board of directors. Really? Would yeah. this board of directors be directing you? They would give me options. Oh, okay. So they would give Direction. you options. Okay. They would give you options. And for you, it's more like, um, yeah, it's more like a team. It's yeah. not like, like a board of bosses. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. I've, I've worked for myself for too long. <laughs> yeah. When you said board of directors, I think board of bosses. And I'm like, oh, oh hell no, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah. no. Nah. Um, oh, um, let's see here. Uh, oh, Anderson Cooper. Thank you, Andy. Anderson Thank Cooper. Thank you, Candy yeah. and Viviani. And hey, everybody, for being here. Scorpio Mama, Annie Bear, Rhonda Rue, um, Tupelo Honey. Hello. Um, I do not have Patreon yet because I'm too little right now. So, um, but I could get Patreon, couldn't I? That doesn't Yeah, you, you my, could get Patreon. Number. It, it, I don't know. You know, there's pros and cons to having a membership on YouTube. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's native. People are here. Um, but for me, because I do politicals, political stuff, I wanted to have a separate space. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you've got Patreon. Okay. I get it. 
it, it seems like more people are going that way, um, which is interesting. But I like it. Have you done sure. other retreats before? Yes. Um, but let me just say before I forget it, whenever you decide to do memberships, just let me know. I'm not thrilled with Patreon. Probably over the summer, I'm going to be going to a different type of membership that I hope is going to be a lot better for my members. Uh, I mean, my members like it. I have 400 members, but, wow. um, but I, I just find it kind of clunky personally. So anyway, um, and then your question was, had I ever done another event? I did an event in New Orleans, uh, kind of, you know, in the very beginning or like the, a year after COVID started, there was just a little like lull where we were going to, we were thinking we were going to get out. We were going to be okay. In that law, I did a, an event in New Orleans, and I got to say that event was small because of pay, because of the whole pandemic. Um, I think we had about fifteen people, um, but it was magical because we had fifteen people. I mean, we ate lunch together, we went on a river cruise dinner together. I mean, it was like we're all still friends, right? We're we're all still. Uh, there was some kind of magic thing that happened. Maybe it was because of New Orleans. Maybe it was was because of the the pandemic. But um, but it really also again taught me this sense of how important it is to not only do this online because this is important too, but even in your hometown, just to get with people that you know or get with people that are are support you, right? That yeah. that 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 get you. And maybe mm -hmm. that means going to the next town and going to the crystal shop and taking a class so that you can meet people. Cause if you just go shopping, you're not going to meet anybody. Right. But if you take any kind of class, you're likely to pick up a friend. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I love that. I love that. Um, because it, it is kind of, we get so used to having everybody online or in spirit. Nobody's in a body right in front of you. <laughs> it was amazing. I, I'm an introvert and I loved it. I, yeah. I loved it. And I'm an introvert. So you can imagine um, one of your uh, commenters asked, uh, I mentioned I would do something in New York City next year. I'm probably going to do three. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I am, I guess I'm probably going to do three events. Um, my guides really want me to do events. Um, I'm going to just mentioned that I might be doing an event this fall. Um, and so I'll let everybody know that probably next week. Uh, but next year I'll probably be getting up to New York. So I have a lot of viewers and clients in New York and a lot of viewers and clients on the West coast. Right. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard to be in two places at once, but, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be heading, um, doing some different events. Yes. Smaller, oh, um, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? You think? Whatever they tell me to do. Or do you have any books or anything out yet? I don't have any books. They want me to write a book. Thank you for reminding me. They put people <laughs> like you in front of me to tell me to write a book. Um, they have a lot of things uh, planned for me, I guess. Uh, it's scary. Uh, but I'm just going to try to take one day at a time. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lisa Foster is saying, South, please. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I will do South. I mean, you, you're going to be surprised, Lisa. I might be doing something closer to you than you think. Um, so I just can't say anything cause I haven't announced it yet, but it's in the works. I I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a big announcement next week. So tune in. Nice. Nice. I love that. I love a, a retreat because it's like, um, instead of being on vacation somewhere and you come home exhausted, you come home sure. and you're like, well, ho, ho, I'm a new person. It's true. It's true. You're yeah. really invigorated, right? Like you're, you're just invigorated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody's saying Kentucky, Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll. Annie Bear says, I love that. Okay. So um, the first thing I want to ask you about um, is um, what is spirit to you? Like, I know that you have so many guides that come in and talk all the time, but what does that look like? What does that feel like? Do you mean spirit like the big spirit or the idea of spirit or yeah. um, big spirit creator or God or whatever you want to call them? I feel like that to me, it's a bit of a mystery, but I would say that I would say that I really subscribe that that we have a God self. 
that there's a big part of the creator in each of us. Um, right. And so I feel like we carry a piece of that light and, and maybe it's, you know, our duty to shine that light or to be that compassion. Right. Uh, sure. but I, I feel like the creator is very compassionate. I don't, I don't subscribe to judgment. I don't subscribe to hate. I don't subscribe to you're better. This religion is better than this religion. I don't subscribe to any of that. I just think it's love. I just think it's literally unadulterated love. Yeah, I, I, I concur. Definitely. I agree. Um, and so when that comes to you, um, have you ever had like any archetypes that you work with or like, um, Mary or Durgama or Jesus or Sh Sheva or Abraham or it's interesting because I'm I'm really a blank slate. I haven't done a lot of classes. I mean, I've done a few, but I really haven't I haven't been steeped in this, right? Like some okay. of you guys, perhaps you as well, you've been steeped in it for many, many years. And I, I haven't. Um, I'm really a blank slate. Um, I didn't really grow up with religion, with organized religion. So it's interesting to me because I am such a blank slate. Um, when, for whatever reason, Christianity, like Jesus will show up to me. Um, the archangels will work with me. Sometimes I have, um, you know, like Kuan Yin or Confucius will come in, but, um, it's just surprising to me because that, you know, I always tell people, all of these people are free agents. You don't have mm -hmm. to be Christian. You don't have to be Buddhist. You don't have to be anything Hindu. You don't have to be anything. If, if you feel connected to their energy and that's resonant with you, then they want to be, they want to work with you. And for me personally, I had, I haven't had a surprisingly, according to my Akashic records, I haven't had very many lives on the planet earth or in the milky way but the few that i've had one particularly uh important life for whatever reason i was a monk and i was um stranded or not stranded but you know again i <laughs> i was in my own personal pandemic on an island in the middle of nowhere uh, basically close to by myself um very very small group of people and I think that's where I got this connection to Christianity because I, I didn't get it in this life. I mean, I'll tell you that. Right. And I've had, you know, like five, a handful of lives here on planet Earth. There's I haven't been indoctrinated into that energy. So I think that I'm picking up on that from that life as a monk. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I was thinking Buddhist when you said that, but Christian, you think, too. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You know, um, I love that because I feel like um, what you're saying about having that clean slate, I feel like a lot of us coming in are remembering instead of learning. Um, and, and so do you feel like the, the light is changing or energy so that this is coming in so fast for everybody? Yes, I do. And I, the way I would explain it in my very, I mean, I feel like it's rudimentary, right? I, I don't, I don't have big fancy words or, or concepts to explain this other than the veil between the worlds is thinning. Yeah. It's really thinning. And what that means is that people like me, like I was just telling somebody literally a ghost. And I don't know if it was a dog or a cat ran up and bit my dog on her butt about three days ago. And I literally jumped in the air. I mean, I physically and my physical body jumped in the <laughs> air. And I, you know, if somebody had, if I had been on a busy street, they would have been like, weirdo, you know, what's wrong with you. Right. But that <laughs> when I say the veil is thinning, I see things more than I normally do. I'm blocking. Cause I just want to live my 3d Susan life. Right. I don't walk around connected to seeing dead people or whatever it is. That's not, that's not really helpful. I need to pay attention to look both ways and not get run over my car. So when the veil is thinning, I start noticing more things. And then I know if I'm noticing more things, I know everybody else is. Whether or not you're a professional psychic or even know that you're a psychic, 
you're going to have more experiences because the veil is thinner. These energies and entities and including, you know, your mother, your father, whoever is over in spirit, everybody can hop that fence, so to speak, so much easier and interact with us. So I think that is one part of why we're having so many new experiences. The other part that I think is Earth. I think that the planet Earth is ascending herself. I think mm -hmm. her vibration is changing. And that has a little bit to do with the Earth changes. And then, of course, we all know the other Earth changes are man-made. Um, so you've got a lot of different factors happening at once. And then on top of those things, time is speeding up. Physicists know they've, they know this. Time is literally speeding up. Now, maybe it's only a tiny little percentage of a, of a second, but that adds up. If you think about seconds become hours and hours become days, right? So all these changes are happening right now. And I feel like we're at the nexus of it. We're here in the middle of this as it's happening. Yeah. So, um, do you have sight with that? Like what does energy look like as it, does it look thicker? Does it look um, with thinner. the veil thinning? It looks I mean, thinner. for me, for me, and I think everybody's different for me, I actually see it as a fog. I mean, when I'm doing mediumship, sometimes, especially if I'm crossing over like a ghost. Um, so that's a, a, a different situation because I've got this earthbound thing and I'm calling up to see if I can get somebody to come down and get it. What I see is sort of like a fog and then I see them come out of the fog, usually at an angle. They usually don't come all the way here. Like I don't normally see all of their whole body. And then they reach in and they grab a hold of the person and bring the person back. So I see it as a veil, as a fog. Now, what I see happening is if the density of the fog is this big and you have to stick your hand through all of that, well, now it's maybe it's this big. Yeah. And I, and I wonder as I'm, as I'm talking to you, it's almost they're they're The guides are saying it's almost like how our ozone is thinning. Wow. That makes sense. I never drew yeah. that connection, but they're like, it's a lot like your ozone. Yeah. Your ozone isn't protecting you anymore. The veil isn't quote unquote protecting you anymore. So um, we've got a couple of ways we can go here. Um, number one, um, galactics. Um, do you think that they're protecting us from? Oh, okay. Well, let's do this. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, by the way, somebody asked about my dog. She didn't even notice it. Now, oh, my dog does. She's a different animal. Uh, she had a near-death experience because I got her from the shelter one hour before she was going to be put down. So she really does see aliens. She, she, she's very affected by this type of energy. In, but if it's not, if it's a ghost, it doesn't bother her. She really is more affected by aliens. Uh, so she didn't even notice it. I'm the one that saw it. But, you know, normally when you see things like this, it's out of the corner of your eye and you're like, did I see it? Did I not see it? I'm telling you, it was there. I'm like, it was, I thought I was going to trip over it. It was almost, you know, becoming a full blown entity in front of me. So that's, that's crazy talk. Okay. Uh, so aliens. Okay. So it, here's my, I am just Susan. Who knows if I'm right? Who knows if I'm wrong? If you if it doesn't resonate with you guys, I would say it's like a, you're trying on clothes at, a, at the store. If you if you're like this looks terrible, <laughs> I don't like the way this feels. Just put it aside. It's not for you, right? Okay. Sure. Yeah. So um, this is a really big deal because I have really struggled with this for about two years, and I mean really, truly, personally struggled. So what I understand is, is that Aliens, there, there really are different um, types of aliens in the sense of what is their um, viewpoint or what is their intention. Sure. What I, and just to simplify it, I would just say good aliens, you know, they don't, they really value and respect our free will. Humans have free will. We've been taught we don't. We've been taught that we don't have psychic abilities. 
we've been held down. Our my guides keep saying if it wasn't for cell phones, we would be much further along using our telepathy. Oh, this wow. is a crutch. Yeah. So, so good quote unquote aliens don't get involved. They don't typically ask you, uh, "Hey, we'd like to help you," or "Do you need help?" They just don't get involved. You know, um, if you wish to connect with them. They're happy to connect with you, but you have to make, you have to really make that first step and you have to have that intention. Okay. Now I'm going to try not to get too crazy here, but my own personal experience has been that I, I am clear audience. So I have psychic hearing. I can hear a um, broadcast saying, Hey, we need everybody to help us. This happened during Trump. And I and I thought, that's the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, who else could be broadcasting to the whole world, right? Like, this is what I knew. It was broadcast to the whole world. It wasn't just to me. It was like, yeah. you know, over the loudspeaker. And so I was like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to help. Heck yeah, I'm going to help. Oh, my God. So I gave permission to something that I didn't vet. I assumed that it was of the light because it didn't feel like it was of the dark. I can feel dark. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it was of the dark. Right. Because it's neutral. But neutral means I've come to find out it's not it's not neutral. It means that it's not of the light. It's not of the dark. It's kind of this gray area of really a bunch of tricksters. Oh, wow. We are, we are like playthings for them. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't, and what I mean is that if they can, um, when you're meditating, if they can, if they can uh, get you to believe that they're the council, like I was, I was channeling this group of Orion whom I've now, and people told me, I, I don't, people kind of like emailed me, Susan, I don't think Orions are good people. And I'm like, really? They don't feel bad. They feel, you know, the whole visual, the count, they look like the council. Sure. They look like wise beings, right? Yeah. Well, so what, and they, and they start off by giving me information that makes sense, right? It's love and light. And it's, I'm like, okay, check, 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 check. Well, once I'm bought into them, then they start giving me these lessons. They start, when I'm meditating, they take me through these lessons. Um, like here, Susan, you're in this particular situation. What are you going to do? Except for that, and this, and I've had this have to happen to clients too. Except for that at some point, they tip their hand to you and you realize this isn't a lesson. This um. is just... This is just them jacking with me because they put me in this situation. They kept saying, no, you have to keep going forward. But there was no end to the going forward. And I was feeling fear because they had put me in this stormy beach setting. And I wanted to get off the beach. It was thundering and lightning and the waves are crashing. And I was feeling really afraid. And they made fun of me for being oh. afraid, right? So that's the tip, right? That's the tip. Yeah. Another time um, I signed on by accident uh, through by sleeping, I saw it signed on with these aliens that were not, I don't know what I was doing with them. I, I mean, I wasn't doing any terrible, terrible things, but obviously I was on the wrong team. And how I figured out that they weren't my friend was they were scaring my dog. They were terrifying my dog. My dog was terrified every time they came. And so I remember telling them, you need to park the ship out there because this is scaring my dog. Yeah. And they said, we don't care about your dog. Oh. And then I was like, oh, well, if you don't care about my dog, then you don't care about no, no, me. No. We, about to, we about to mix it up right here. You know, so, like, <laughs> so, so, but, but because I gave them permission, mm -hmm. right. I couldn't just, you know, I said, go away. Well, they didn't go away. Right. So did you call in an archangel? Oh, or? I called in everybody, girlfriend. I, <laughs> I, I called in 
at one point, I swear to y'all, Jesus Christ had a machine gun. I swear to y'all. <laughs> I was loaded, right? It didn't work. And, and this is what happened for a year. And, and my spirit guides kept saying, Susan, it's you. And that would infuriate me because I'm like, for the love of God, tell me what I need to do and I'll, I'll do it. Right. But no one can yeah. tell me, no one, I got reading after reading. I got pet psychic readings. I did everything you can imagine. It got really, really bad. I mean, really bad, probably the, the most challenging time in my entire life. Um, and I'm just now coming out of it. And, uh, first thing that I needed to do was I needed to revoke permissions. So I, well, what, how, what I do, because, okay. So you guys that are watching this video, when it, yeah. when the problem is in here, it's really hard to uncover it because it's, it's blocked. It's, it's, it's like trying to grab air. Yeah. Okay. So I would suggest everybody read the dark side of the light chasers by Debbie Ford, the dark side of the light chasers by Debbie Ford, because, because this is what's happening. You guys. As light workers, as as humans, we're not in our body. We're not we're not physically inhabiting our body. Maybe mm -hmm. we don't like our body. Maybe our body's ill. Maybe we're tired. Maybe we're overweight. Whatever, whatever it is. So it's like this is your house and it's empty. So squatters are going to come in and live in there. Yeah. Right. So that's how you get attachments. That's how you, you know, and then you end up accidentally give, giving permission. So two things is what I did. I, to find out what's really going on with you, you either need to have somebody help you uh, go into a meditation and then uh, talk to your higher self. Your higher self knows everything and your higher self will tell you in no uncertain terms how you're screwing up. Sure. So I would put, I can put myself in a trance. And then I would play, I would just record it. And so I had this, I, I figured out that I was at night, I was piloting these um, little <laughs> alien crafts, which actually I freaking loved. It was a blast to, to fly them. <laughs> and they wanted me to fly them because I was psychic to humans. I could, I knew what the humans were thinking and you piloted the craft through your intention. So if your intention was, if you just had the thought, go down and under this fence, that's what the craft did. So it was really a cha a thinking challenge for me, which I loved, right? Sure. Um, so, but I didn't realize that I was like joy riding and breaking all the universal laws at the same time. So when I finally figured it out, I requested, I requested to be before the council, the, 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 the council. And let me tell you, they brought me up short. They said, uh, you've been doing this stuff and you've been breaking all these universal laws. And I said, I have not. And they said, yes, you have. And they said, I haven't. And then they showed me a picture in my mind of me piloting this. Um, thank you, Gigi by the sea, piloting <laughs> this craft. And I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah, I guess I did. So mm. basically they said, okay, here's what's happening. They gave me this big, long number. I don't know why. And they said, you're a healer. And then they threw me over to the side. <laughs> they were like, get out of here. Don't bother <laughs> us like, ever again. So, but that didn't stop it. Like I knew the, I knew what was happening. Right. But yeah. it didn't stop it. And then I revoked permission. So something you can do is say, I revoke any permissions that I've given to anybody or any entity that doesn't have my highest good in their energetic intention. So it is. But the bottom line, you guys, and this is why I did the way out Wednesday, is that we don't believe it. Humans don't believe we're psychic. We don't really believe we're piloting ET ships. Therefore, we don't really believe any of this is happening. So we're just speaking the words. Yeah. And when you're just speaking the words, all these entities know that you're bluffing. Yeah. Trust and vulnerability. We're, we don't think we're worthy, do we? Uh -uh. So you've got to get in. You've got to love yourself. That's why I say dark side of the light chasers, because what she has you do is look around in there, find the ugly bits that none of us want to accept. Yeah. None of us are ascended masters. I, I am a train wreck, right? We're humans. 
Yeah. Nobody is special here. We're all struggling in our own ways. And the faster you kind of reach in and open the door to the basement and see what kind of stuff is in there, the faster you can own that. Once you own that, you own your fear. You own the darkest thing that's hidden inside of you. They got nothing. They can't do anything to you because you're owning everything about yourself. I love that. Hypnicity. I've surrendered to the possibilities. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and that's such a thing in our culture, isn't it? Like stuffing everything down, repression and constructs. Like we're so busy every day doing the same single thing, going to work, you know, making dinner, whatever, la, 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 la. And um, uh, so we don't think about like I'm present in this moment and how do I feel about it? How do I really feel about it? Is that something I really love? So, And is it okay to really love something? Because sometimes when you grow up in a broken family, when you really express happiness, something usually comes along to squash that happiness. So we tend to accept, okay. Well, yeah, we don't, we weren't raised with those, um, um, not code of ethics, but um, being able to do with that, with those tools. Right. And I know with my childhood, I wasn't. And, and a lot of people here, it depends on what your age, well, it doesn't depend on what your age yeah, is, but yeah. But like, you know, I, my mom was in the, the Holocaust. My dad was in the Depression. And, and everybody has something. It doesn't matter if it That's was. That's right. Everybody has something. Everybody has something. Yeah. Yeah. So there, we get it from all sides, don't we? But um, yeah. So being able to, um, what do you think that is the easiest way to do that? <laughs> the one, two, three. <laughs> well, I really do think that I'll, I'll tell you for me, and I'm, I mean, honestly, I struggled with this. I'm not kidding. I couldn't sleep. My dog would not let me sleep. Oh, I'm sorry. If I would go to sleep, she would jump on my head, which is where my crown chakra is. Yeah. So she would not let me sleep at night. And she would be panting and wall-eyed. It, it was, it's heartbreaking. I have videos. Oh. It's heartbreaking. And I was, my heart was broken for her. And I, but I couldn't sleep. It was terrible. So the thing truly is that, is it's that, once you accept whatever you don't like about yourself mm -hmm. and you own it and you love it and you accept it, nobody, not an alien, not your family, not spouse or boss, nobody can hold anything over you because you're really standing in your power in a, in a genuine way, not in an ego way, but in a genuine, just calm, content. I think, uh, and, and this is for me, right? Like I'm running from whatever those hurts were from my childhood. I've, I've put them all in the closet and shut the door. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. But these entities, they feed off of fear. They feed off of negativity or sadness. So if you're not dealing with it, then you're, a, that's an attractant. And if you have abilities, and, and this is the thing, you guys, I just have to say this. I'm about to go on a whole full court press about this because, hey, Kevin, Please. um, I had a client tell me, I'm not psychic at all. I'm not psychic at all. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, the only thing that's ever happened is I had this big vision. I had this really important vision and I followed it and it changed my whole life. What do you mean you're not psychic? You know what I mean? We're, we, we all, none of us think you're psychic. You think you have to be special to be psychic. Honey, you don't have to be special. You just have to be human. It's your birthright. Mm -hmm. Some of us, our psychic abilities are maybe buried a little lower. Some of them are a little closer to the surface. That's the only difference. Yeah. And so these entities are attracted to us because we have abilities that we're not using. So, so deal with your shadow. That's my best advice. Deal with your shadow side. Do the shadow work. Love yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Be your own best cheerleader. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it is hard. Um, 
in this society. And then I think um, the pandemic made us look at all that a little closer. That's true, yeah. It was That's a good true. stopping point. But also it's such a divisive time that we had to look really hard, right? I mean, either you, you could get, you had a choice. You could get caught up in all that or you could go a different direction. Um, I just find it really interesting that um, um, you were so aware of your psychic and your gifts you know, your talents, let's say. And, um, and, and that's, I guess that's why they were coming for you because you had so much light, right? Well, yes. Uh, but uh, yes, that's true. But you know, what's interesting. I want to tell you guys, I didn't, I mean, I could see ghosts from when I was a kid that didn't feel like a superpower to me. <laughs> it felt bad. Like, I don't want to see ghosts. I don't want to see dead people. I don't want to see these things. So I repressed it. I didn't think I was psychic. Sure. I knew I could see ghosts and stuff, right? So when I when I finally went through my spiritual awakening, and I think sometimes this happens in in layers, right? Like we go through a little one, and then it maybe goes dormant, and then it comes out again, and maybe it goes dormant, and then it comes out bigger, right? Um, it doesn't oh it doesn't go away, you guys, but it can go dormant if you don't have time for it. They're not going to force it on you if it's not the time, right? So what was interesting to me was. Once I started doing mediumship, I realized that I was psychic and nobody was more surprised than me. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys are judging whether or not you're psychic based on yourself, based on, well, I didn't know about this. I couldn't mm. figure that out. You're, you're not using the right yardstick. It's very hard for us to do readings for ourselves. That's why I put myself in a trance and I talk to my higher self. Yeah, it really I can't. is. My spirit guides tell me what to eat. They they tell me, are you going to eat that next piece of pizza? You know, I mean, I think that's rude, right? But when it comes down to, can I move out of Texas? You know, they're like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, you just freaking give me an answer, right? So because there's a lot of emotion around that, it's very hard for us to read for ourselves. So if you have questions about your own psychic abilities, Go read for other people. Take a class and read for your friends. Try not mm -hmm. to read for coworkers. It gets really messy. I wouldn't suggest it. Um, but read for people, your friends' friends. Yeah. Just try. It, it is hard to read for uh, family, isn't it? Oh. I always feel I always feel like I'm really up against a wall. Like, will they believe me? Because I don't suggest it. Yeah, it's not easy. Though it's I not love not. them so much. And you, of course, since you love them so much, you want to have a well, love. What, what if they ask you, what if you have a face, and I think you do, where you can't really hide what you're getting? <laughs> and they ask you, Am I, is my boyfriend, my girlfriend going to break up with me? Am I going to get the job? <laughs> I think I'm going to get fired. And you're like, You're going to get fired. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I would rather not be asked that question. I'd rather right. not be under that kind of pressure. So I learned that lesson pretty quickly. Like I just don't read for family. I try as hard as I can not to read for friends. Look, if a friend needs a, a reading, I send them to another one of my friends, right? That's a psychic. Sure. And I I'm like, too. hey, let's read each other's friends. Let's make a deal where maybe one a month will give each other the gift of reading each other's friends one a month or one every three months or something like that, right? That's beautiful, um, yeah. There's ways to do that, but but you have to... It's really weird, right? Being a psychic. I was just thinking about this today because I don't like, I don't go around probing into my friends' relationships or whatever. And I think they wonder if I do, you know? Yeah. So that makes it awkward. It does, doesn't it? I was talking to a friend about that the other day, an old friend, and he said, oh, well, I met so-and-so and, and then they told me that they do readings and I was like, Ooh, we're out to dinner. And he goes, yeah, I'm not looking at you like you're naked or something. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <you know? laughs> See? See, you're all good. But some people do. I, I mean, I think that's ethics 101. I, yeah. it, and it's not healthy psychically, emotionally. It's not healthy to be spying on people. You know, no. you don't have their permission. You shouldn't be looking in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Unless your daughter's stuck in India during COVID and then you do a little remote viewing. Well, that's that. 
<laughs> you know, your daughter is a different. Yeah. Family. Yeah. That's, I, I'm just joking around, but I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ingrid. So, um, Oh, okay. that's interesting. Hypnicity said doctors don't treat their own families. That's interesting. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. A really good idea. And that's a good thing you can tell people, right? So that's your out. Doctors don't treat their own families. Psychics don't read their own families. Yeah. I know, yeah. Miss Charlotte. I've been talking about leaving Texas. I, I, um, I had another client tell me that I'm not leaving Texas this year, and I just want to have a fit. <laughs> so I pulled these cards here, you guys. I don't, I have to pull cards for myself, right? Cause yeah. Cause I'm arguing with them. So, uh, current energy, I got the Knight of wands. Okay. So the current energy is the Knight of wands. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, that says, um, energetic, passionate, um, check this out. My block, check out my block. Anybody want to give me advice? I appreciate it. My block is one of the happiest cards in the whole damn deck. It is beautiful. The ten, of, the ten of cups. My block <laughs> is happy relationships, satisfaction, being aligned with my true nature. And the outcome is uh, public recognition, victory, winning, satisfaction. So it sounds like to me, like I could just pack the truck up tonight after this video. Yeah. And be gone. Oh, okay. Or you could look at it like, it's all good there too, I guess. But. I can look at it. My block, what, this is the problem. My block is happiness. Now, how can your block be happiness, right? Yeah. That's one of those brain twisters. So you have to think, okay, do I think I won't be happy? Do I, am I going to miss, I don't have family here, but I have friends that are like family. Sure. Um, but um, so I think once I figure out the block, which is happiness, which is why I haven't been able to figure it out. Right. Do you got, do you, does this make sense to you guys? Oh, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I'll be there in five days. It's going to take a long time for me to get there. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I, I think you'll get like, Oh, you're going to caravan. <laughs> you're going to caravan. A oh convoy. my God. I would love to live in Canada. I love Canada. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it's, um, I feel the same way though, Susan, I've been looking at land up North thinking that, um, you know, what state are you in? I'm in Missouri, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's actually pretty good right now, except for it's very red, but my city's blue and, um, and, and it's fun. I've got a little bit of family here, but, um, I'm just looking at areas that I think long-term would have good possibilities with climate change and yeah different stuff have but. a little buffer around you a little land buffer yeah yeah but i don't like to garden i mean <laughs> i can't stand it <laughs> i oh, used to no. love it and now i just let everything go wild and, and i love that so yeah oh miss charlotte you moved um oh it's jumping i moved from quebec to ontario 18 years ago lauren hunsinger I don't really want to go back. I have one more month of summer here. More flowers. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, oh, yeah. I am going to get the um, Hillary Jewels. I am going to get to that. Okay. Yeah, we have questions on our community page, too, that everybody wants me to ask. So let me get to those. Um before you, before, while you're getting that ready, uh, Terrell Stash, it's nice to meet you. I've not met you. I mean, I know about you because your reputation precedes you in a good way. Uh, but he says, consider that I could be key for helping shift the energy in Texas and the world. If I moved, it could shift the energy of the actions that are happening. I think it could shift in a good way because you want to know why? I moved here when Ann Richards was governor. The woman with the great big silver bull bouffant that rode a Harley. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can do this. And I right after I moved here, GW won. I think it's me. So I'm just telling y'all, whatever state I move to, I'm sorry. I'm sure once I move out of Texas, Beto will win. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but wherever I go, I'm sorry if it turns red. I don't know what I, it's some kind of karmic thing that I've got to figure out. It's on my list. Yeah, I do think that sometimes we're holding light for that part of the planet 
right? I hope so. so that it helps it. And I and I do think it'll probably be another year for me too before I go anywhere. She was incredible. I remember seeing her incredible. thinking, oh, she's a boss lady. Yeah, boss a lady. boss lady. Mm-hmm. We sure could use her right now. Uh, she would have, she might have gotten duped by GW that one time, but she, she would have caught on to this shenanigans that's going on. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Arwen the Gray is asking, hello, Terry and Susan. I would like to know a little more about my path and things that are in store for me. Stability or the lack of it seems to be constantly getting in the way. I'm very drawn to energy healing and would like to pursue it. Where is my life headed? There's a lot of questions here. She'd like for it to get easier. You're doing really well. T said that. Um, I mean, I find that our soul's past sometimes doesn't feel easy. Yeah. And I, I swear, I, I think that's by divine, by design, right? Like I really think it's like if they were going to give you a pot of gold in this life, they're going to hide it in the bushes behind the rock where you have to hang upside down to grab it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just going to be work. Right. But so Arwen, I don't know. I don't know if this is um, a past life, but I, I don't know if I have all the time to, to sort it out, but you know, you are a healer, but I see you working with uh, teas and herbs, tinctures They're telling me the word tinctures. Um, I see you being an herbalist. Now this really could be past life, you know, because that's, how they healed people in the past. But I really feel like you're, you've got this herbalist, like this homeopathic energy. Um, I do think that you've got energetic healing ability too, but there's definitely something about creating the recipe of the different herbs and how this herb or this spice or this ingredient is going to interact with this. And then that's going to cause this. It's kind of like plant alchemy is what they're saying. Oh, lovely. That's beautiful. Um, And Viviani would like a message about her path. Hi, Viviani. Um, Viviani, I don't know if you're here, but I, I just saw animals. You really might be, well, okay, there's a lot going on. Um, there, there's also a lot of sprite energy, fey energy, uh, like leprechaun, fairy, that kind of energy around you, Viviani. Again, I think this is linked to a past life, but I also think that it's this life too. So you have this ability to connect with those kinds of elementals. Thank you, Viviani. I'm glad you're here. Um, yes. And I'm getting to the animals next. Um, so, but the elementals are a big part. They're not a big part because their, their energy is so subtle. Elemental energy is really subtle until you kind of connect to it, then you can really pick up on it. But that's really in your energy. Now, animals, I think you're a, you would be a great pet psychic, animal psychic. Oh, I love that. You, and so you could, uh, and also I think you already do this, but I think that you have a special place in your heart for marine animals. I don't know if it's orcas or uh, whales or dolphins. Uh, I mean, marine animals in general, but then I also saw you psychically communicating to like zoo animals. You can That's talk to your, you're like Doolittle. Dr. <laughs> Doolittle. Yeah. Viviani, I see that too. I see some like sparks of electricity around the animals when they come in with you. So definitely a current that you're getting. He wants from to them. learn Reiki for animals. Okay. Well, um, that's great. The Reiki, what that Reiki, anybody that does Reiki can tell you is when you're doing Reiki, all of a sudden other entities appear, mm-hmm. right? Um, oftentimes because you're in that mix of energy. So learn Reiki on animals. But I think that, um, yeah, I mean, you can do this. This is very easy for you to do. You, This would be even more than Reiki. Like you can just know that this animal has a toothache or this animal. But this is why I'm saying about pet psychic. Let me tell you how important it is. Um, I was staying at a house that a friend was pet sitting for. Okay. And so the owner wasn't there. 
And uh, my other friend who's a pet psychic said, this dog has a bladder infection, but the dog was having no symptoms. The very next day, that same dog started peeing all over the house. Now, oh, if my friend, the pet psychic, had not said that, we would have all thought it was behavior related. And we wouldn't yeah. have taken that dog to the vet. So because we knew that, she called the owner. The owner said, yeah, take, take, take the dog to the vet. Turns out the dog has a bladder infection. So really and truly, in my opinion, people that do pet psychic work, give animals a voice. I think it's so important. It's so important. Right. It, totally it is. And I think that um, that's the thing that I've really learned about that is talking to them. And, and we think, well, why is he doing that? And you didn't have a, didn't have a conversation with him yet to find out why, right? Or to really talk to him about it. Oh my goodness, I'm losing everything. It's okay. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone. All right. And then Samantha says, hi, I would love some guidance on how I can move forward and make positive changes. Okay, this is for everybody. This, this, I did this, so I know it works. This is how I got here. Okay. okay. Um, the very first thing is watch how you speak to yourself. If you're saying, and I, I'm saying that I did this myself, Susan, you know, really, you can't figure this out. Aren't you old enough? Shouldn't you know this by now? You think you would be able to, you know, critical, right? Now, I really, I really had to retrain myself. It wasn't like instant. I had to catch myself saying something negative and then I had to rework it and say, okay, Susan, that was a big mistake. That was a big mistake. There ain't no line. That was a big mistake. <laughs> Luckily you've made mistakes before. You know how to fix them and you'll just fix it. And right. you know, maybe this time you won't make it again. So I'm gentle with myself. I treat myself the way I would a small child that just doesn't know any better. So doing that raised my vibration. Uh, a really, really good uh, vibration lifter is, and this is super, super helpful, is a gratitude list. Uh, if every day, if you will just say, what are three things that I'm grateful for that I didn't know to be grateful for? Now, the reason you're just not making a list, I'm grateful for my kids, grateful for my house. I mean, that's, that you're just counting things you already have. When you challenge yourself to find three things you didn't know that you should be grateful for, you start looking for things to be grateful for. And when you're looking yeah. for something to be grateful for, all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I thought I hated these curtains, but man, they're so good at keeping the sun out. I'm grateful. So boom, my energy just went from, I hate these curtains to, you know what? I'm actually really grateful. So it can be something as silly as curtains. Right. Yeah. And, and awareness too. I think um, like when you're, when something comes up and you're feeling fear, being aware of the fear and just the minute you look at it and say it, then it changes the vibration of it. Doesn't it? Absolutely. Completely. Um, let's see. Who did I see here a minute ago? Miss Sharon Sipe is here. Hey, Sharon. And we need to say hello to her, uh, Mod ex Extraordinaire. Mod walk Extraordinaire. Yeah. 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 So, and Sharon Donnelly. Wow. The Sharons. Okay. So, um, the next one is Annie Bear. What are some signifiers of lucid dreaming? Laughing, seeing your own hands? lucid dreaming. So the, the spirit guides would say that that's could also sometimes be daydreaming. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they love daydreaming. So, so they would say that sometimes we, we make things a little too precious or too special. Um, but if you're just like sitting somewhere and just zoned out, like you're, you're not focused on anything and you're zoned out, that's lucid dreaming, according to the guides. Um, now, if it's active lucid dreaming, like you're literally having a vision of something that's happening, right? Um, it's pretty obvious when you're when you're lucid dreaming because 
I don't know how else to answer that question. It's pretty obvious. I think trust it. I think the quite the problem maybe might be that you're questioning it. And and 50% of this is just trust. Once I trust that this is indeed a sign, and I'm grateful for the sign, then I'm I've I've decided to walk that path, right? So trust that you are lucid dreaming is what they would say. So do you feel like sometimes imagination plays a part in that? Right. So imagination, and I've started doing this and it works. I, I It's never failed me. With my clients, I tell them, imagine. Imagine what your spirit guides look like. And then I make them say, really quickly before you can think about it what color is their hair what colors are clothes how tall are they and yeah. if you have to answer it before your subcon before your brain can answer it then you you know you've done it you've you've broken through so imagination when i say imagine something your brain says she's not talking to me your brain just goes over there and sits down the other thing that i would say is the imagination is the language the spirit communicates in. You're not making it up. It's literally the the language that they talk about. Yeah. I'm skipping ahead. Azalea says, you're awake, but you're not while having a dream. Like you're asleep and having a dream and you know it's a dream or a vision. Yes. Would that be lucid dreaming? That would be lucid dreaming. Like when I saw the Gumby men, right? I wasn't mm -hmm. wide awake, but I wasn't asleep. But what I experienced was real. Maybe it was real on a different dimension or maybe it was, you know, not half this dimension and half not. But yes, I agree. That's a great way to describe it, Azalea. Yeah, that's really nice. I think um, sometimes when I wake up at 4 a.m. or 3 a.m., I'll do the um, go into a meditation and um, and I've got a little twenty nine ninety nine um, watch that I wear that tells me that I'm I'm back in REM sleep. And I know that I've gone into a deep nice. meditation, but it's, um, but you're half in, half out, aren't you? Yes. You're so half in, half out. And that honey, that's like the meditative, that whatever that Delta, whatever that brain wave is, yeah. that's like the meditative state. That's where you can, and, and that's where I try to put myself, right? So if you can get there, let's say you're, you're dozing in and out, you're sort of awake, that's a really good time to start asking your spirit guides questions. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, Scorpio Mama is asking. I've got to get that one. There we go. Oh, when do you see me having another baby? Now, I don't know, Scorpio Mama, if this is figurative as one of your, your books that you write or if this is a cat or if this is a child and I don't I I'm not sure if you're here or not tonight are you Scorpio mama hmm so I would say and I thank you for for saying that that's such a good lesson that you just taught us all is yeah. birthing right birthing is a creative process it yeah. could be you're birthing a new idea or even a new a sense of self, right? Or potentially, you know, a child or a cat, uh, right? Um, but you're the energy of the maternal energy of birthing something, of, of incubating, gestating. These are the words I'm getting is gestating and incubating. I feel like you're incubating something. I feel like something is gestating in you. I feel like, um, it's uh, you're sitting on the egg. You're the chicken sitting on the egg. It's it's not. I don't think you have. Um, I don't think it's there yet, but I think it's coming. So I don't think you're pregnant yet, but I think that it's coming. It feels like it's coming. Soon. Wow. Yeah. That's this year. That's lovely, Scorpio Mama. Congratulations. I love that for you. She's so kind hearted. And then we have a few starred ones here. Um, oh, 
Gerald wants to know who did your Akashic Records reading. Oh, thank you. Um, I went to uh, Robert at um, Akashic Attunement, AkashicAttunement.com, Robert Brunges. Uh, he's very good. Um, so, yeah. And, and guys, Akashic Records are great because what he did for me was it's like you said earlier, Terry, like I'm, I'm different, right? Um, I, I just do things differently. I would take a mediumship class and I would say, well, let's just ask for Ralph to come in. And they're like, you can't ask for, I'm like, yeah, I can Ralph, come on in. <laughs> I wasn't trying to show off. It's just, I'm impatient. I can't be dealing with all these dead people. It's like, it's too much. I just want to call Ralph up on the phone and talk to him. So I did. So I wasn't a very popular student. So, but what, what Robert taught me was because I haven't had very many lives here, I do things differently. And then it, it gave me like the permission, right? To be different. I, all of a sudden I was the, I've always been the zebra in the world, in the, in the herd of wildebeest. And I wanted to be the, the wildebeest, but now I'm like, oh, okay. I'm just the zebra. So it just, it made it okay. For me. Yeah. So I love that about this type of, of readings, right? You can learn why you are the way you are, and then you can more easily accept it. I love that, um, that you're saying that, because sometimes I feel like as empaths and psychics or sensitives, we grow up thinking that we're not normal and we try so hard to oh. be normal. And then when we do become psychic, we try to be a normal psychic. We're not. Listen, we're not normal because I, we just talked about how you were at the table with the psychic and you're like, you know, should I put up a shield? You know, what's going on here? You know what I mean? We're not really normal. It, you know, we're not we're not really going to fit in. So, again, yeah. accept yourself, accept who you are, love yourself. That is the way forward. So um, do you have any um, ideas about that? Do you have like do you recognize your light every morning or do you um, have like I am's or, you know, I am beautiful. I am, I am strong. Um, and what do you do with that? I can just tell you guys, do not follow me. Do not be like me. Do not do what I do. It's, I, and I realize that I've taught so many people that you guys are, are like surpassing me because you do what the guides tell you to do. And I'm over here, like, <laughs> get up in the morning. I'm like, coffee. I just need some coffee. Don't anybody talk to me. You know, here's some dog food. You know, I don't, I don't do, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry to say that. I, I, I will, I know that I'm being encouraged to do that. And it's important to have sacred space. It's important to have spiritual hygiene. But I don't do it. And part of my problem is, is that I don't have to do it. I could give somebody a reading while I'm in line at Taco Bell. And I don't, I don't have to do it. So I don't do it. It's like, you know, yeah. Okay. You want a reading? Let's see what's going on. I, so it's bad. It's bad because I don't have to, so I don't do it. But I, I yeah, but I don't think it's bad because I think everybody has, and I teach meditation, but I feel like everybody has a different meditative state for some people it is sleeping or lucid dreaming nice. for some people it's playing music for some people yes, it's dancing yes, yes, yes. for some people it's doing readings yes yes so, that's so true i'm so glad that you say that it, it's anything right exercising can be very oh meditative gosh, right yeah. um yeah amazing. so absolutely absolutely that's very sweet of you thank you <laughs> Well, I think it's very true. It's just like musicians and um, oh yeah, comedians, especially. I think have a real direct line. Miss Charlotte says, "So, what do you think the difference is between the veil thinning and people raising their vibrations?" I I feel like they're not exactly connected. I mean, I I feel like uh, what are the guides saying that like um. I don't know how to describe that. So they're all happening at the same time, um, but they're not connected. It's like if you were to see something moving, bars moving at all the same time, they're in sequence, they're in synchronicity. Um, uh, they would all, and don't forget the earth. The earth is raising her vibration too. And humans 
we have to raise our vibration. If we want to ride this puppy, it's like she's a bucking Bronco, right? If, <laughs> if you want to be in synchronicity with mother earth, then you, it's just, it's going to be a Darwin thing, right? Like if you're, if you're, if in 20 years, if, he, if the majority of humans are still violent and judgmental and harming Mother Earth, then those humans are just going to be, you know, maybe they'll get on Elon's spaceship. I don't know. You know, yeah. good riddance, right? I'll stay here with her. Um, so does that answer your question what the difference is? I mean, I just think it's all the whole thing. We're all ascending. Yeah. And I am not the be all end all. I could have all this wrong. <laughs> this is just what I'm getting. <laughs> Let's see. Lisa Keller. Hi. What about my past life before this life? What was that like? And what was, oh, and is my gift in both lifetimes? What is my gift in both lifetimes? Oh, sorry. There That's we go. I don't know, Lisa, if I can do all that in just like three or four minutes. Um, yeah. It's a lot. It's a um, lot. <laughs> but um, I'm seeing a picture of you. You're wearing this really weird hat. I, I, it may be a nurse's hat but it's kind of cardboard. It's, it's stiff. It's not, it's not fabric. Um, I feel like you have a uh, really pretty hair in that life. It's, it's like a light, a light Brown. Uh, uh, it's a little darker than Terry's hair. Uh, it's, uh, it's got some body to it. Uh, and it's about shoulder length. Um, you're thin, uh, just because I think it, I think this is just the time of, of your life is that, you know, people were thinner. Um, and I feel like you, you were in some sort of healthcare situation. I feel like you were of service. I don't know if this was around world war one or world war two, but it feels like you had a real sense of duty, of patriotism, of standing in the breach, right. Of doing, of being called forth. Um, and, and you really liked in that life, you really liked that you really liked being needed, right. And having a sense of purpose that was really, really keen for you. You took it very seriously. You took, you, you were a very serious person about things. Um, you felt like it was a serious time and you took it very seriously. Um, you weren't a jokester about it at all. Um, so in that life, you, you had this sense of purpose, which I feel like in this life, um, that's got to resonate. Either you want a, a sense of purpose in this life, or you found it fleeting, like it comes and goes, or you get it, but it goes. But, but you really miss that wholehearted sense of everybody being together in one direction for one reason. Um, you miss that in this life, right? This, uh, it, it feels in this life, you feel like everybody's cats and one's going this way and one's climbing the curtains. And, you know, it's like, it just kind of bugs you on this low level sort of way. Uh, I think that in this life, you wish people would take things more seriously. Um, and I don't know, let me know if that makes any sense to you whatsoever. Um, so yes, that's what I would say. Yeah, I was seeing that hat kind of like a dutch girl Where you it? good yeah very cool um but so i don't know if it was um europe and um sweden or or even here maybe it was a war here but i i i you have this i'm not you're american i feel like in that life you're american do you get the sense that she's american or does she feel european to you i you know what i'm getting is like a milkmaid or something. I know that sounds weird. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. That could, I mean, be, that, could be, that could be international. That can be, yeah, she that can be go very, very. So the energy is I'm very serious about my job. Yeah. Right. And so whatever it is that she's doing, she's focused on it. She's very serious about it and she doesn't take it lightly. And people are telling her to lighten up, live a little, lighten up. Now this might be something that you're hearing now. Um, I don't know, but, uh, in that lifetime, whatever it was you did, 
you were you were very serious about it. Yeah. Oh, I want to do this one real quick. Um, Amy asks, if I listen to a guided meditation, my phone cuts out during it. Will I be able to come out of the meditation on my own? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get lost in space. Yeah. Although a trick that I have, and you might do this too, is for people that, um, so like I'm a overthinker or I'm a person that, you know, has a lot of active mind. Um, so I tend to use guided meditations. Um, so after the guided meditation ends, when they say, come back, wake up, whatever, just stay there, just stay there in that place. And then say, I would like to ask my higher self this question because you're in that zone, right? So you mm -hmm. can take advantage of still being in that zone to then you can kind of use the guided meditation to launch you into the zone and you can stay in the zone and kind of ask some questions. Now, if you ask a question like, what do I need to know for my highest good? You're likely going to get nothing or something like love. And so try to ask specific questions. Like even if you ask, am I on my soul's path? That's a big, that's a big question for them to answer. Um, you know what I mean? So try to narrow it down to things that are pretty yes and no, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody said that it sounds, oh yeah. Gigi by the sea said that nuns used to have head coverings like that. Yes. That, that could be right. It's that the energy of this seriousness. So it could have been that, a milkmaid, a nun, a nurse. That makes perfect um, sense. Yeah. A nun yeah. makes sense because there's, everybody's focused on towards one purpose. And that's yeah. the energy what I was getting. Yeah. Lauren, working in unison. Yeah, definitely. And Callie Healer says, your daily meditations are amazing, Terry. Oh, how sweet. Thank you, Callie Healer. We have fun with them. So I was um, taught to do um, or to teach uh, with Deepak Chopra with, um, and that's like a TM thing, transcendental, and it's silent meditation. But I do all guided meditations for everybody because I feel like it's easier for a lot of people yeah. and it's and it's fun. So I have I have fun with the other two, but um, but that's easy. And you know um, something that I started doing just recently uh, because med meditating can be hard, right? So you may some people may benefit from smelling some essential oils while they're listening to the meditation. Some people may benefit from watching a candle burn while they're hearing. So you can take in your other senses like smell and visual too while you're listening to Terry's, um, you know, guided meditations. Okay. I'm so glad you said that because we do that. We don't do awesome. it perfectly, but we bring in all those senses. Nice. And I feel like that is a huge way to bring in your clairvoyance. It's a huge here. way. Yeah. Just it's a boost. Senses. It's it is. a boost, right? And then to boost and then to boost, to boost them on your physical level and your mental level. And then again, once you hit, once you hit the higher altitudes, hit it again, man. And you just get that. Your brain just knows that pathway then even physically. It's amazing. Okay. Hur Hurricane 4C1. Okay. 4C1. Okay. When I closed my eyes last night, I saw my stepdad, Aravid, passed in 93. He was wearing an wearing Avtan suit, never wore a suit, only farmers, overalls, and a room with chairs lined up. What's that mean? Hmm. Your guides want me to ask you, what does it mean? But um, so, okay. So, You've got some clues. He's wearing a suit. He's in a room with chairs lined up. It's, it's in, and so from here, you can ask yourself, does it feel like a waiting room? You know, does this feel like a hospital? Does this feel like, um, you know, what does the room feel like when I go into the energy? What does it feel like a school? Does it feel like, uh, what's it a waiting room for? Right. So these are ways that you guys can kind of crack the code yourself too. Um, and you can also, um, and this is for everybody too, just get a pen and paper and just say, 
ask those same questions and write down the very first word that comes to you. This is how you do it, guys. You guys can all do this, right? Yeah. Um, you just write down the first word that comes to you. And then that's a puzzle piece. And then you get a few more puzzle pieces and then you just try to fit them together. Um, I don't know if I'm getting a clear answer as to why he was in a chair. So let's ask the question. The question I think would be, and it's all about the question. The question would be, is this about you? Hurricane Force One, is this about you? Yes, but I heard yes, but it's about family. So it's it's not just about you. It's about family. Um, she says she's thinking it was a gathering like a funeral. Yes. Yes. And I and it, it felt they were going to, to tell me it was a graduation or a homecoming. So you have to understand for them on the other side, a homecoming is is like a party. You know, they're they're happy right? To receive us over there. But I will give you a caveat. I had this same thing happen to a friend of mine and she's still kicking like five years later. So it could be that somebody in your, in your family is coming up against an exit point. They may or may not exit, but the other side is preparing in case they do. He never went to any gathering, Thanksgiving dinners or anything. He's not at a gathering. It's not a table. He's in a waiting room. He's in a waiting room. He's waiting to see someone. He's waiting to get access to someone. He's waiting. Now, I'm going to throw this at you. Uh, when I was not doing mediumship, I had a waiting room of old dead people that I still don't even know who they were. <laughs> and I could see them. And I was like, what? Why are these? I can see them in my mind's eye. I'm like, why are these dead people over there all the time? I wish they would leave. So this could be you. This could be that you're coming into your mediumship abilities and he's waiting in the waiting room Ooh. to communicate to you. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So um, I have to ask you a question because this is fun for me. When you go to a funeral, do you hear all the jokes being made on the other side? Like, is it a big party? Yeah, it's a big party. But see, usually when I go into a funeral, I'm, I'm, it's somebody I know. Right. So right. Um, yeah. I, it's, it's complicated because when you right. have emotion that tends to block your connection to the other side, but um when I do readings, yeah, they got jokes. When I do readings, if they're a funny person, they make really morbid jokes. Right? Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, we've got one more here. Um, um, uh, <laughs> Candy wants a message from Spirit. Candy Mullen. Okay, Candy. Her Hurricane Force One says Bob or Robert at Akashic Records told her to take a mediumship class. Oh, yeah. He's just sitting there waiting for you to take your class, honey. He's got all the time in the world. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. He's all uh, dressed up waiting for you. Yeah, that's that's the message. That's <laughs> why they wouldn't give it to me. And they kept teasing you about getting the message yourself. Uh, okay, Terry, can I have a message from Spirit? Okay. Uh, Candy. Candy wants a message from Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. So you're going to be going through uh, some changes, um, perhaps even your families. I, I don't want to say that it's bad changes, but sometimes change is just a little bit difficult, right? It's it's uh, hard to handle. Uh, we like things to kind of stay the same. It's just easier, right? So their message is you're going to be going through some changes and that you got this. Everything is going to be fine. Um, you're you're going to be juggling a lot of things and you're going to be thinking, I, I can't keep all these plates spinning. Uh, but there you've got more help than you think you do. Um, you've got help on the other side. You've got help in the 3D. Um, but there will be some changes 
and you're going to have to navigate them. And it's not like your favorite thing to do, but they want to reassure you that everything is going to be fine. Um, can I ask, I know Candy quite well, and she's, um, she's starting a, a YouTube channel with this, oh, great. With her, her channel perhaps, or plates spinning in the out air. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kelly Healer, um, can you put your message? Yeah, I think you did. Cause I think I did ask your question here. Um, no, Kelly Healer, you're not here. Um, if you could just put it back in and again, dear, because I don't see it in here anywhere. And I printed out, I printed out like a half hour or 45 minutes before we started everything that was on the community page. Yeah. Great message for candy. Right. So, um, so you don't have a daily practice. Besides being you, I think that's that's a meditation oh right there. Oh my god! Right? Connecting to spirit and being you. Yeah, I mean, um, for sure, my life is out of balance right now, and I'm trying to like kind of balance it better between work and having some more play time. Um, I want to do more swimming. It's you know. And exercise to me, that's in gar gardening is really hard in South Texas in the summer because it's brutally, brutally hot. Um, so I am, I'm going to be balancing that. But yeah, I don't really have a specific daily habit. I do feel like my guides want me to have one. I think that that's, I, I mean, let's re let me rephrase that. It's not that they don't want me to have one. They think it would benefit me right? They don't care. They're, you know, they're like, Hey girl, do you do, do it the way you do it. You know, we don't care. Uh, but it might benefit you, Susan. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like that, right? Like, um, you can tell the kid, you know, it might benefit you to tie your shoestrings. So you don't step on one and trip yourself, but you know, you do you girl. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, that's sweet. Sharon Donnelly, what message does spirit think that I'm not hearing at this time? Ooh. Okay. I'm going to tell you, but I'm also going to give you guys uh, with my members, we do this every other Sunday. That's a really good question. Cause it's the kind of question every other Sunday we meet and the spirit guides ask a question. They, they tell us what to ask. So I want you Shannon to grab some Oracle cards and I want any, everybody to ask that question. What message does spirit think? I'm not hearing at this time. You're going to ask that question. You're going to pull a card and you're going to see what your spirit guides tell you. This is how you work with spirit every day and then write it down because if you don't write it down, it just disappears. Right. Um, so for me, sorry, I jumped ahead of you. Uh, my message is be in the here and now, which I swear to God, my dad came through. I use my dad. Everybody in my family has to work. I don't care if you're dead. You got to work. So I had a client and my dad helps do people read him as part of their training. And, I, and my dad gave me this very same message today. The very same message. <laughs> They're doubling down on it. So for you, Sharon, uh, what does my spirit guide think that I'm not getting at this time? It's really about self-love. It's, it's, it's really about, I know that you're doing better. I feel like you're doing better. I feel like you've made progress and I feel like you're, you're really doing better, but, um, there's a little bit of like hurt here in your heart chakra, um, grief that is affecting you, but we don't, you don't know that it's affecting you. You know it's there, but I'm just going to tell you, you don't really know how much it's affecting you because you're not in touch with it. So they would they would like for you to heal. As a matter of fact, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is like the splinter that comes out. You know what I mean? Like you think, oh, it's, it's, it's healed over. And then a couple of months later, the darn thing is coming out anyway. This is kind of like this grief is going to be coming out anyway. So just love yourself through it. Um, and you'll be fine. And uh, there's a releasing coming, uh, for you. Yeah. 
being gentle with ourselves. That's so hard, isn't it? It's so hard. It is yeah. so hard. And it really um, is. Yeah. So being gentle and then um, um, also rewarding ourselves. You know, I feel like that's such a big thing for training your brain. Um, like if I do this, I can have five minutes dancing or whatever, you know? Yeah. So different. There's Cali Healer. Could I have a message for my birthday tomorrow? Oh, um, happy birthday, Cali. Um, Cali Healer. Happy birthday. Um, so like your solar return, right? Um, so, um, People are pulling cards and this stuff works, guys. I'm not kidding. It really does work. Mm -hmm. um, Callie, I'm being drawn to water. I feel like water has a message for you. Uh, water is healing for you. Uh, you don't have to necessarily be in it. Although I think that you had a past life where you were not human and you were some sort of water type entity or whatever you want to call it, energy. So water has been important for you and it's very important for you. So um, the message is, is that there's, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes the guides say water is the prescription, right? Just looking at water can heal people that need that in their life. Like looking at a tree can heal you. You, you don't even know that it's happening, but it's happening on this molecular hidden sometimes level. You're being healed and you don't even know it. It's, it's almost like being in church. It's like a sacred uh, connection or reunion. So for you, they really, really want to talk about, about a water. And then I almost said fires. The other thing is fire for you. Um, there's a message for you in fire. So you may want to uh, meditate and look at a candle flame. There's something, I don't know what all the things mean, you know, what wind means and fire means. I don't know what all that means. I just know that water has a message for you and fire has a message for you. Um, so even, and, and the water is so important for you that you can even get healed by filling up a picture of water in your sink. Just the gurgling sound. I mean, it's it's really important. Mm. So the message is, is maybe to spend some time this week around that sacred energy of water. And then alternately, because how interesting that fire and water are opposites, right? Water puts fire out, right? So there's yeah. a message for you that's opposites. So there's a message that there's an opposites thing coming in your energy that that um not to not to um ignore the opposite of of not to ignore the fire so there's a message of fire to you too and you move to california to be close to the ocean perfect 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 well yeah, and fire boils water, right? So they oh, work, dear, they work know. together, right? But they're but many times, so that's the message. Thank you so much, Sharon. So the message is like these things are opposites, but they're really synchronous. They're really synchronous. There's something in your life that's opposites, but is but it has a synchronous energy if you're able to see that energy. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Do we want to do one card for the group here? Yeah. I don't want to keep you all night. And yeah. I know you're busy. <laughs> um, well, before we started, I was hearing that song, Born This Way. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. That what is a perfect song. That's a perfect. I mean. For us psychics, for us zebras in the, in the hilda in the in the wildebeest, you know, like why am I a zebra? Right, born this way. I love that. That's perfect. Perfect. Thank you guys for coming. Oh, oh Carol says one last time, then bed. Who was I talking to coming out of my dream with the lobster doing lobster hands? 
I think she was getting light language and yeah. talking to her guides. Yes. Yes. I agree. Did you hear that, Carol? Light language, talking to your guides. Don't you talk with your hands a little bit anyway, Carol? So, but, but I mean, you weren't, you were definitely light language. I'm just saying it's very interesting to me because usually these things are all right. So if you have a really keen nose in your physical senses, your nose, your psychic smelling is also going to be keen. If you're a thinker, thinker in your physical mind, you're also going to be a thinker, thinker receiver in your psychic. So they mirror each other. So you were talking with your hands in reality, but you were talking light language with your hands. Uh, yes. See, there you go. You answered your own question. There's, there's the answer to your question. Terry nailed it. You're, you were light language talking uh, in this unique way. Yeah. Is there a, a, a Greek God or somebody um, that has to do with horses? Well, there's, there's Pegasus. And centaur. There's a centaur, oh, right? That's right. Pan. Is I don't know. That just centaur? came to me. So Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> you go ahead. Do you want to pull a card for the group or? All right. I just, I wasn't. Oh, you don't have to. I got, I got milk and honey. I love that. That's and you see beautiful. that's like a little elephant in there playing. And there's a rainbow back there mm. for our rainbow theme. Yeah. The land of milk and honey, you guys, it's here for you. This Everything we need is here for us. Oh, wow. That's mm. amazing. That's cool, Carol. Yeah. She's that on. is amazing. Wow. She, she's on it. Girl, you're like a drug dealer over here. <laughs> you like Get it's your a gateway fix. drug. Terry's gateway drug. <laughs> Get your fix. Get your um, fix. I'm Route 66. Okay, I get <laughs> I get revelation, which I love. There's nice. Ganesh. It's revelation. Look at him. He's looking at at the stars and the energy, and that's what you've been today. Oh, uh, and Susan. I had a I had an elephant, and you had an elephant. Oh yeah. Well, this whole deck is elephants. It's all Ganesh, but you pulled an elephant. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And, um, oh, sorry. Let me see. Thank you so much, Susan, for being here. And um, mods, thank you for moderating. And all you beautiful people, thank you for being here. And Susan does... Huh. I don't know where that's coming from. Oh, well, we're almost done. Um, Susan, you have, um, uh, with your, your, um, membership, you do this once a week or once a month. I do. I do that. It's, I call it a soul growth Sunday, soul growth Sunday. We do it every other Sunday and, uh, spirit guides ask us a question like that really good question that they asked. And then we pull a card and then we journal. And then uh, generally spirit asked, and I'll tell you something they just did. Uh, this is a kind of a, can be a complicated thing, but they suggested that you pull a card for one month for the rest of the year. So pull a card for June, July, August for the rest of the year. Now, what that does is, <laughs> is that if you pull a scary card or not a scary, I mean, don't use tarot, right? You won't get a tower card, but if you get a card that's kind of, you know, not great. And it's like in September, are you going to spend between now and September worrying about that? Or are you going to let it go? Or are you going to attend to that energy and work through it before you even get to September? And therefore it's a non-issue, but it's really a lot of lessons all rolled up into one, right? Because and, and invariably all of us got one card that we didn't like towards the end of the year. You know, so it and so what they said to do is write this in your journal, write down the card, the deck, all that stuff. Right. And then write down if you have any impressions, you can write them. I think this is about this or maybe it's about that. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Then the beginning of the month, you can say, well, the month is here. This is where, where I'm, how I'm feeling. This is what I'm doing. 
And then at the end of the month, you can say, this is how that card played out for me. <laughs> right. Uh, Ms. Charlotte says, if you pull a day card daily, are you better doing it in the morning or when the day is over? You know what? They're telling me this is, a, th th first of all, don't overthink it because we don't need another rule. Uh, our lives are super mm. busy. Um, so if you pull it, if you normally pull a card every single morning and then you skip a day for it's okay. It's, it's okay. If you skip a week, it's okay. You know what I mean? Be gentle with yourself. Uh, sometimes, uh, some people are morning people, some people are evening people. So it's not really a right or wrong. What do you think, Terry? I think anytime you do it is the right time. There you go. You know? It's, it's, you're right exactly where you need to be every minute of every day. Yes. So here and um, now that's the card I pulled Yeah. here and now. And, uh, that's what my dad told me. So, yep. Yeah. And you're giving me the message again. <laughs> they repeat themselves. Don't they? Yeah. Well, I need it. I need, I need my board of directors to <laughs> take care of business. <laughs> Take care of my big business. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for being here. Lots of hugs. Namaste. Our light sees your light. And have a beautiful night and happy June Gay Pride. We'll see yeah. you later. Yes. Bye, Bye everybody.